November 2016, Havana, Cuba. As the sun sets on the island, a U.S. diplomat and his wife are unwinding with friends. This couple has just moved to Cuba, and their names have been kept anonymous in reports, but the diplomat and his wife are living in an upscale development called El Country Club. They're having neighbors over for drinks, and suddenly they hear this sound, and it fills the air and sounds kind of like cicadas, only it's a more piercing metallic sound. The noise persists through dinner. At the couple's request, maintenance workers check the property for insects and look for any electrical issues that could be causing the racket, but they find nothing. The sound lingers for three months, during which time the couple falls ill. He and his wife have been feeling off ever since shortly after the sounds began, kind of cloudy with difficulty concentrating. After a while, the diplomat shares his experience with co-workers at the U.S. Embassy. A colleague in his 30s says that he also heard this high-pitched sound and started to experience health issues. And he plays some audio that he's recorded of the incident. It's the same noise the diplomat's been hearing for months. Days later, that diplomat and his wife are examined by doctors in Miami and diagnosed with concussion-like symptoms headache, fatigue, disorientation, and balance issues. More diplomats and others start reporting exactly the same set of symptoms. Over the next two months, more than two dozen officials in Havana are diagnosed with the strange condition. What's even worse is some of these victims enter a second phase of the illness where they have even greater cognitive difficulty and trouble hearing or seeing. It's really horrible. These symptoms have just appeared, and there appears to be no treatment. You have to wonder, what could cause this in so many different people? To try to learn why, the U.S. government opens an investigation in January of 2017. The first group of embassy employees are thoroughly examined in the United States, and a report is published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2018. Perhaps most seriously and notably, the study concluded the patients had sustained widespread injury to brain networks. There is a clear physical change that has happened to the brains of these patients. It's visible in the MRIs, but that change is minor compared to the results of several neurological tests that target memory, executive functioning, and spatial orientation. According to the study, these same severe effects would occur after a devastating car crash or explosion. But none of these victims have experienced that type of trauma. At a loss, doctors dub the mysterious illness Havana Syndrome. Initially, the mysterious Havana Syndrome only impacts U.S. diplomats in Cuba. But by March of 2018, diplomats at another embassy in Havana fall victim. It starts happening to the Canadian embassy staff. This is very strange because the Canadian embassy is about three miles away from the U.S. embassy, so it's not like they're adjacent or anything. Canadian diplomats and their families start reporting exactly the same kinds of symptoms U.S. embassy staff had reported. Disorientation, nausea, dizziness. Ultimately, 40 Canadian diplomats fall ill. And so the Canadian government ends up pulling its diplomats out of Cuba. From very early on, the United States has believed that Cuba is behind Havana syndrome somehow. I mean, you give it that name, the president goes on live television to blame the Cubans. This is a very bad look for them. Some in the White House are actually calling this an act of war, so the Cubans are very anxious to clear their name. The Cuban government interviews about 300 neighbors of these diplomats. They say that they've gone to the living quarters of embassy staffers, that they've analyzed air and oil samples, and that they've conducted dozens of medical examinations to see if people in the surrounding area were afflicted. And they say they find nothing. The Cubans are saying there's simply no known form of energy that can selectively damage the brain the way the doctors describe. They're even doubtful that there's a syndrome at all. Instead, they offer an alternative explanation for both the sounds and the symptoms. The Cuban government, in their report, theorized that this was not caused by sonic weapons, 
and the chirping noise heard by everyone was crickets. The rest of the symptoms, the Cuban government says, could be caused by stress. After all the hours investigating, evacuating diplomats, conducting extensive medical tests, to suggest that maybe people were just worn down by the sound of crickets, that feels like an insult. Two biologists, UC Berkeley's Alexander Stubbs and the University of Lincoln's Fernando Montealegre Zapata, research Cuba's claim. To them, that metallic chirping noise recorded in Havana sounds vaguely familiar. These biologists had a massive database of the sounds of different kinds of insects, their mating calls. And what the biologists found is that the sounds that were recorded in Havana matched precisely that of one particular kind of insect, the Indies cricket. And moreover, this particular Indies cricket is resident in Cuba. For confirmation, they use state-of-the-art audio technology. Forensic audio analysis can be incredibly specific these days. Sound wave patterns can be kind of like fingerprints. They can even be used to convict killers. So what's interesting is that when you apply some of these acoustic forensic techniques to what was recorded in Cuba, it's an exact match of the cricket mating call. Obviously, crickets aren't as menacing as a sonic weapon or a deadly neurotoxin, but this isn't your garden variety cricket. The Indies cricket can chirp at 100 decibels, the same volume as a subway train. You can imagine that if you had a couple in your residence, that could be a really rough night, especially if you're not habituated to those sounds. If you're from another country, and this is the first time you've ever heard it, that could be extremely disruptive. According to the Cuban report, the crickets may be magnifying stress that the diplomats are already experiencing. The Havana syndrome has some classic telltale signs of psychogenic illnesses. There are studies that show that people who have been exposed to long-term stress have similar brain scans as the Havana victims. That stress might be self-perpetuating. After the news of a possible weapon hits the media, the diplomats are put on alert. They're told that someone could be watching them at home. They're told not to sleep, or to stand near their windows and to report any strange symptoms. They're afraid for their families. They could never feel safe. But those suffering from Havana syndrome strongly disagree. Several people got sick before there was an alert, before it reached headlines, and people went into panic mode. The first four cases were CIA officers. These are people who are trained to deal with massive amounts of stress. With opinions split, over the cricket theory, the U.S. government calls in an elite scientific team to conduct its own analysis. The federal government has a semi-secret advisory board known as Jason. It was formed in the aftermath of the Soviet Sputnik launch in 1960. Jason attracts the nation's most elite scientists to advise on defense matters, kind of like what we saw in World War II with the Manhattan Project when Einstein and Oppenheimer were researching nuclear energy and weapons. Today, there are between 30 and 60 of our country's best scientists involved in Jason, and they're only activated when there's a particularly difficult task at hand. And at this point, the U.S. government sees Havana syndrome as such a difficult matter that then they turn to Jason. Through a Freedom of Information Act request, Jason's top secret 2018 report is released to the public. And while much of it is redacted, the Jason scientists concur that the noises on the Havana recordings are crickets. While they agree on the source of the sound, they don't agree on the source of the illness. The report goes on to say, quote, it cannot be ruled out that the perceived sounds, while not harmful, are introduced by an adversary as deception so as to mask an entirely unrelated mode of causing illness in diplomatic personnel. Basically, they're saying these crickets could be a distraction to hide another form of attack. And suddenly, the Cubans blaming the crickets seems really convenient. Maybe the Cubans are involved, maybe not. Either way, once again, we're left with no idea what's making our people sick.